spiritual seekers and magical warriors, all of you precious listeners out there today. This is Age of the Mage, episode 12, and it's going to be kind of a short one. I'd like to revisit who this podcast is really for and what we'll be doing in the podcast together. I want to be very honest with you. I believe that this podcast is intended for a very select group of people. And if you visit my site, modernmasters.org, you will see that we often refer to these people as the chosen. And I want to be clear what the chosen means. It is not referring to anyone that is better or more special than someone else. It is not about superiority versus inferiority. It is simply referring to a group of self-selected people. By this I mean people who resonate to certain ideas and identify themselves as one of the quote chosen based on their resonance to these ideas, based on their self-evaluation of whether or not they fit into this group. And so I believe this podcast is truly intended to be, to be a way that I can reach out into the world and attempt, attempt to make contact with any of you who feel that you may indeed be a part of this group and yet without a means to communicate with you or without a way for us to network and co- connect with one another, We all remain out on our own in the world, in our communities, in our families, in our social groups, maybe even feeling pretty isolated sometimes because we are the outliers and we are a minority when you consider the entire world population and how small and select this group really is. It can be difficult to make an honest, deep connection with someone living nearby or someone close to you. And so the network that spans the world is very important and critical to this group, this group of chosen individuals. Now, what are, who are the chosen? Well, we believe that our world is approaching and already is in the midst of some very critical time, time and space and multi-dimensional junctures. Quite a few years ago, I had a vision, a a long, drawn-out vision experience that really warned me that this day was coming, and it felt so urgent. I wasn't even sure when they were, this download of information, when, when, what was it about, and what age was it referring to? Well, now I believe it was referring to this age, this time in our world and on our planet and in our society, this very time. And it's a, it's a critical time because we're, we're going to be dividing, I believe, as humans into two major timelines. These timelines are very critical because they will acquire large portions of the human race And they will eventually reach tipping points. They will eventually create a collective reality around the timeline itself. And we can see this worldwide right now where there is a push from dark forces, I believe, to squelch our individual freedoms as humans and take more power for themselves. And for me, after many, many years of study, I refer to these people as the globalists. There are many other names for them, and I believe they're definitely attached to beings that are non-human. But they they seem to be exhibiting all the signs now out in the open. Um, They become much more blatant and are not hiding their agendas anymore. They, They have decided to go for it, do the push, and bring people onto a timeline that unfortunately, I believe, leads to enslavement. It does not really lead towards freedom, even though it may be advertised as a free timeliner or, you know, and the propaganda that's built up around it may 
look like it's providing more freedom. I think it's a deception and I think it's a trap. The timeline that I would like to be see become stronger and stronger and that I plan to merge with and, and live out as a part of my reality is the timeline that's the very hallmark of it is free will. And this is free will for all. This is sovereignty. Personal sovereignty is allowed on this timeline. And I believe this timeline comes with a whole bunch of benefits too, with more advances in free technology and free energy and much improved medicine, means of healing, energy work, and all sorts of exciting things to me exist on this timeline and also allow us as individuals to access those things. So this is my goal that I move on to that timeline and that also we collectively help that timeline gain momentum and gain strength so that its reality becomes dominant and and becomes the the dominant timeline for the human race so that we can evolve in a very benevolent and beneficial way. So these podcasts, these are a way of reaching out to you if you feel a resonance with those thoughts. Are you, do you feel that you would like to be on that timeline? Because that's number one, I think. That's the first consideration. And it's also part of the chosen. The, the chosen have this second... Okay, we'll back up. Let's go back. So when we use the word chosen, it also means that there is a natural inclination in these people, and perhaps you are one of these people. There's a natural tendency to cherish and value invisible realms. Now, that can occur in different ways. Some are magical practitioners, and they come out of magical traditions, and they really honor those traditions, and they have found that they work for them, and they're able to manifest things in their reality by using those traditions, and they're also able to achieve the alchemy of magic, achieve inner transformations that they are working towards. Some people may have a background that has led them more deeply into prayer work or meditation, mindfulness, Zen activities. So again, it's about reaching your connection to your soul, your spirit, your soul, achieving a a communing, the ability to bring all that invisible world into your visible and 3D space through different means. I'm not here and never will be here to criticize or value one way over another because it is the ability to reach the depth that matters. the, The pathway is very individual and up to each of you to choose. But what sets apart the chosen from perhaps other seekers and other casual people of casual interest is that there's a level of dedication to this practice that they have. They, They feel fueled and feel exuberant when they know when they're in a zone, I'll call it a magical zone or a spiritual space. They, the chosen need this to be vibrant and to be active and to be, feeling most alive, where a lot of people are very, very uh, satisfied with 3D living and earth life and, and they're busy and they're wrapped up in all their events and they don't seem to crave this other portion of living as much. So number one, the chosen are tied to a method of truth seeking that feels good for them. They may also have a background that has just forced them into this. For example, we have some chosen who are galactic hybrids or UFO abductees. Um, Others who have history with tribal ancestry and maybe shifters, astral travelers. We have have people within within the chosen network who just started experiencing things from childhood. And it can look at first glance as though they didn't choose these things and their investigation into these things wasn't their choice. 
but I do believe the soul has chosen, even though the memory of that choice might be, you know, blinded by the veils that fall when we come into this domain. So there's different ways that people come to the, to their, to honor the spirit and to honor the invisible and to investigate it. Different paths lead people to there. So again, not only will they have paths very different that bring them to respect and honor and investigate and uh, be very curious about the mystical realms, but they will have paths leading out from that investigation too that are very specific and individual to their needs and resonate with their individual gifts. All right, so there is this bond. There is this affinity in the chosen for all things spiritual, all things magical, even though they vary. All right. What's the, what's the second most common feature of someone who would identify as one of the chosen? Well, for us and how we interpret this, it has the service to others factor. So in other words, we all love our personal journeys and we're very, those are very important to us as they should be. And we focus on our personal progress and we, we have desires and we have emotions that rise up that are very specific to us and our needs and our wants as it should be. But the second level, the, the expanded um, feelings that we find arising in the chosen are those feelings that, all right, I know I can do this for myself now. How can I help someone else with this? How can I reach out now? If I'm a good healer and I have managed to heal a few of my pets or, or I'm noticing that I'm healing rather rapidly, my body heals rather fast and I don't get sick very often and, and I've, I've explored this and I'm feeling healing energy within my body. Could I help that person next door? Could I help my mother feel better? Could I help my sister? In other words, it's a natural inclination to reach out after some of the personal needs have been met and stepping stones that um, we reach on our own personal journeys as those, you know, get behind us and we're, we're continuing. Those that are chosen have a true desire to help others with their gifts and with their talents. So if we put these two things together, we have chosen and we mean that this is a very spiritual, psychic, um, in tune, um, you know, magical group. And then they want to go the extra mile. They, they begin to see how they can use magical forces and spiritual applications to help others. And now when we put these two major features together that describe the chosen in general, we can add the fact that they're here, that you are here at this very unique time. Here we are. We've landed here together at a very critical juncture for the entire planet and for the human race. And who knows how many other races and species will be affected by our decision as well. This is not an accident. No matter how many times you have been reborn, no matter, no matter how many realms you have, your soul has passed through, you're here now. And this is, to be, this is to be considered as a major component of your purpose and your destiny and how you can fulfill your truest destiny at this time. So we bring in the chosen characteristics and we add those to the timing that we're watching in front of us right now on earth, all of us are going through. And we see, we start to see a certain kind of person, don't we? We start to get a picture, an image of who, of this type of person that I believe I, these podcasts are really intended for, are really reaching out to. Now, does it matter if you're old or young? No. Does it matter if you're black, brown, or white? No. Does it matter if you're American or Egyptian or Japanese or European? No. Does it matter if you're rich or poor? No. 
Does it matter if you're educated or have a bunch of street skills behind you? No. None of those things matter. That will not determine your resonance to these messages and this podcast and the Modern Masters group. None of that will matter. This resonance is based on spirit. This is based on the unseen. This is based on those things that travel through etheric networks. This is based on your calling. What is it? What is your calling? What it, how it ties into your destiny? What, what is it? That's what this is based on. These podcasts are a way to invite you to take a journey with me and with others that will be listening at the same time. And that is an invisible etheric network that is building up energy and that we can someday do something with that energy that has arisen in our network of little nodes of light. And so throughout the podcast, on a practical note, I'm here to uplift this network and to offer a space and a place of resonance to all of the chosen throughout the world. Not every message and not every podcast will pertain to you directly because we might cover subjects that just aren't in your field of interest, understandable. But overall, I am hoping we can lay the groundwork for a very supportive and intricate etheric network for one another to lean on, to become a part of, and to build energy with. And so we'll sometimes cover different ideas about magic and different ideas about spirit. We'll go down deep and sometimes things will be more practical or uh, more accessible, almost mainstream. But a lot of things will be profound and will be very specific and will go into areas that the mainstream audience just won't be able to go. You have experience with this already. I know that. I know some of your stories. I have heard stories for many years now, and I have visited with many of you in person. And we'll be discussing things like dark and light forces and how they both intertwine in our, in our purpose. We'll be discussing so many things that are not easily accessible to those who aren't, aren't here for this purpose. That is to come, I promise you. So we will share spells, visualizations, mindfulness exercise with each other. And we'll, I'm also hoping that sometimes if I have received a download from my guides or a very special group of beings, I will definitely share that with you. But even more often, I feel that my purpose is more to uplift you and encourage you and bring vibrations directly to you that allow you to get your own inspiration. You have your answers. I can only offer suggestions or some inspiration from time to time and maybe uphold a certain vibration of a certain frequency for you. But truly, the podcast at the very heart, at the very, you know, the center of the purpose pertaining to these podcasts is really this kind of weaving of a very supportive network at a high energy, at, at a high frequency to help sustain you on your paths. I do hope this message makes sense. I know that it's a unique type of message. And I know that I am today reaching out with this message to very certain individuals out there. Now, do you have to be an expert already in some magical practice? Do you need a whole history behind you of accurate psychic interpretations? No, again, this message is not about 
3D proof in any way whatsoever. This, this message that I'm offering to you, the chosen, can be heard by a 14-year-old somewhere, anywhere in the world, and they will just simply know the message is it's part of their life. And it can reach a grandmother in another part of the world who perhaps isn't even that active out in society for some reason, maybe a health reason. But her spiritual strength is going strong and burning bright and she recognizes the message being for her. This is a heart to heart message. This is this message travels on its own etheric energy plane. And I suppose that about wraps it up for today. I, I think I just felt the need to, help, to offer some more clarification about this age of the mage. And I truly believe it is. It's your age. It's your time to shine. Mages, sages, spiritual warriors, astral travelers. No matter how far you go, the star seeds, the galactic hybrids, the intuitives, the healers, whatever category you see yourself in, whatever experiences lend magic, paranormal, supernatural experience to your life, that doesn't matter. What matters is the part we share. I thank you for being here. I thank you for listening. So much more to come. I honor each and every one of you and your paths. And I hope you will hear this invitation and I hope it will make at least a little bit of sense. It's hard when my heart is talking instead of my brain. It doesn't always make as much sense as I would hope. I wish you all the best. Take care and we'll be back soon. Bye for now. <laughs>